Hello everyone and welcome to Sorted Food. Now some of you may already know that we recently launched our very own TikTok account, Sorted Food Official, pluggy plug plug, and we thought there's no better time to test some TikTok food trends. So we found a load of foodie creators on TikTok, we're going to give their recipes a go, we're going to add our own twist and we're going to have a lovely little experiment, <laughs> aren't we Evers? You're up first. I am up first and this is very much an experiment. <laughs> So this is by Cake Pops Queen. Uh, obviously beautiful looking cake pops of all shapes and sizes and beautifully decorated. This particular video is a chocolate bomb. Uh, and whilst she did it for Christmas, we think chocolate is the bomb all year round. And therefore, <laughs> let's give it our twist today. He's done it. He, oh my goodness. You put him in one come. TikTok video. <laughs> I didn't know he'd do that to us. So this particular video has got 2.6 million likes, and I think it's because everyone wants one. Essentially, set chocolate hemispheres, melted and stuck together with a filling of stuff, hot chocolate and marshmallows, and then decorated afterwards. What about this recipe stood out to you? Because you're a chef. It's not very often that we mess around with chocolate and temper chocolate and create chocolate in moulds and things like that. However, what I also thought, was what if we did that and then we give it our own kind of cocktail twist. Crowbarring booze into it, I yeah, like it. Yeah. So I've got some dark chocolate which I've been melting over a pan of simmering water and we want to melt it until it goes above 45 degrees Celsius. So this is the art of tempering, right? And really important if you want chocolate that has a shine and a snap when it sets. Otherwise, it's all a bit flimsy it can bloom if you don't, and you don't get the shine. So it's really important you do this if you want that shine. Is the bloom the little white bubbly bits? Yeah. Above 45, back down to 26, and then raise it slowly for dark chocolate to 32 degrees Celsius, and then you use it. We're gonna do the easiest method that you guys can do at home. Over a pan of steaming water, and then into ice water. 26.4, now back over the steam, to bring it back up to 32, and then we can line our silicon mark. I'm also gonna glitter two of these as a bit of an experiment. I'm excited for these. This is the kind of thing I'd never usually attempt at home. It feels a little bit too... Chefy. Yeah, chefy and involved. But then hopefully, we just, just let gravity do its thing. Now Zoe's version of the chocolate bombs were filled with drinking chocolate and marshmallow. I'm not really mixing that up a huge amount other than I want the flavours of kind of like espresso martini. <gasps> oh yes! That's my favourite cocktail. Here we are. I was always backing you mate, all the way. <laughs> That's the reaction I wanted. So, alcohol, coffee, chocolate, all combined and then the marshmallows will be inside, but as they kind of melt into the bomb, they'll kind of float to the top and form something reminiscent of crema that is not crema like you'd have in a martini cocktail, but you get the idea. What I quite like about these is the fact that you see something that looks cool, you're inspired to give it a go, but this is kind of almost experimentation ourselves. Who knows if it's gonna work, but as long as we enjoy the process, Speaking of enjoying the process, Ebers. I'm enjoying this process. Little coffee liqueur. We're just going to neck that now. Oh, if you'd like a little. Oh, I would. Little a little tipple. Little tipple. Right, cool. From Dijon. Cheers. Must be. Oh, yes, that needs to be fabulous. going all in one. Mm. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Ebers, how are we looking? They've set up, they've tempered nicely. I think they're a bit thick, but hey, what we have got. <gasps> Oh, that is beautifully, beautifully shiny. Not a shiny. preheated pan, is it? It is. He's done it all. Oh, is that how you melt them together? Oh. So you've got a join. That's our coffee liqueur paste, our marshmallow filling, oh, yes. a glitter top, melted chocolate becomes the glue, and we end up with the chocolate bomb. What's that? I'm just making a little piping bag, because if you haven't got any edible glitter, you can always finish it off. Yeah with white chocolate. Should we see if it works? Yeah. Yes. Chocolate bomb, hot milk. Oh, oh, oh! Whoa! That was like a volcano! <gasps> and there's your marshmallow. That was pretty cool. So the proof is in the pudding. There was air inside of our bomb, and then it kind of, as it broke, 
bubble to the surface, marshmallows do float, and I think all that's left to do is stir it. Well played, Evers. Well, you say well played. How many glasses are there? Oh. Go on, Evers. Normally one would just enjoy from here. This is going to be sloppy. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Oh! You definitely want to share a bomb, don't you? Yeah, you do. That's like drinking pure chocolate. Oh, that oh. coffee. Coffee's good, though. Comes mm. through like a stonker at the end. Great job, mate. That, mm. that worked. So Cake Pop's queen doesn't just make lovely looking chocolate things for the internet. She also makes them in real life for real people to buy. Her own business, Zoe's Delights. Oh, cool. Yeah. The thing is, now we know it's worked, he could set up his own business. And then I thought, no, he can't, because he can't copy Zoe's Delights, because then it would be Ebba's Delights, and that sounds horrific. Oh. <laughs> Coming in, Spaff. Baked feta pasta. It's been everywhere. Everyone's done it. We're the last people to do it. I think we know what this is like, but shall we have a look anyway? Let's do it. We could have chosen any one of millions of people uh, to look at their baked feta pasta, but we're looking at cooking with Aya. She is an incredible foodie creator. She's got tons of really, really great stuff. And I don't know what it is about hers, but it just looks fantastic. And it's all just done in that pan, right? Everything's done in that pan, and then I add cooked pasta to it. Job done. No, not job done. What's your twist? I have two twists. Number one, now lots of people who do this use oregano, as does Aya. We're mixing it up. We're going for some slightly different flavors. We're using sumac. Interesting. It takes it somewhere different. And I think the simplicity of this dish is the tomatoes and the feta and the garlic. And then you can play around with other aspects, the spices. Also, twist number two, the pasta shapes. And I picked a shape <laughs> that reminds me of Mike. It's called Giggly Al Bronzo. <laughs> Pronunciation may leave something to be desired. Okay, fine. Well, I don't buy any of those answers, but go ahead. <laughs> Tomatoes, garlic, in, oil, sumac. This is already a bizarre recipe. When I first saw this, I was like, feta, not a cheese I'd associate with Italian pasta dishes. You're kind of already doing a mishmash. So to go again to something like sumac, it's kind of cool. I've put my block of feta in there, seasoned it with some sumac, poured some oil over it, and that can now go into an oven for about 30 minutes. After about 20 minutes, I'm gonna put my pasta into that water. I want that nice and al dente. Leave that to boil away, and as it comes out, we'll stir it all together. It smells good. It smells amazing. Whip it out. And this is definitely one of those recipes that you can mix and match, depending on what fresh herbs you've got on the window. So you could equally do this with oregano or thyme or rosemary or basil. Ooh. You can see how soft our feta's got. It started to... Mush it, mm. mush it, mush it. Wait! Why? I need to take my garlic out of its skin. Okay, so... It does look good, though. Squidgy, golden, but protected from the skin. Oh, yeah. See how soft that oh, was. Oh, tease. Smush it properly, yeah. Do you want a third twist? Yeah. This isn't basil. <laughs> Now that's parsley because it goes better with the sumac. Pasta going in. And those bell-like flowers with those ruffled edges are going to be perfect for that sauce. Some of that pasta water in there. Wow, that looks good. How's about that? How easy was that? I mean, making a really good pasta sauce is not hard because of that delicious, wonderful, starchy pasta water. It looks great, Jay. A bit of parsley. Oh, a bit of sumac. Oh, he's been finishing it with the sumac. And I would say that is ta, and indeed, da. <laughs> right, boys, dig in. Can't wait. Cheers. Bon appetito. That sumac is so zingy. It's really citrusy, isn't it? Yeah. I would never think to put feta in a pasta dish. It just doesn't, it's not the cheese that comes to mind, but it works so well, the saltiness and the creaminess once it's melted. It's one of those things that every few years an idea comes along and it's just not what you'd have expected, but it lands so well that everyone wants to try it. 
And when they try it and they get these results, you can see why it takes off. It's a bit of a game changer. Well, Mike, you're up. Yes, I am. So, let's have a look. Okay, so this is from a creator called Audrey Saurus, who is amazing, by the way. Um, her account basically features recipes and food that you just want to eat. But the trend that I'm looking at specifically today is candied fruit or tankulu, a method of candied fruit from China. It involves sugar work. It involves boiling sugar. It involves tempering sugar or taking the temperature of said sugar <laughs> and basically candifying fruits. Audrey does this to strawberries and the sugar syrup is see-through. They look spectacular. I'm going to try it with lots of different things. So let's see. So first thing, I'm going to chuck a load of sugar in here and then I'm literally just going to put enough water for it to coat it and cover it. And basically what I want to do is bring this up to a boil. You're going to boil off the water so that the concentrate that you're left with at the end is between 80 and 90% sugar. See, I know the theory, but the execution will be tricky. It needs to be hot enough to give you the crack, but if it's too hot, you don't have the glass mirror-like shine and see-through, you end up with caramel, which is amber or darker even. Speaking of pinch points, Want to hear my twist? Salad. What if I could take something like a radish, or even worse, celery, <laughs> and candify them? Sweet, salty. What if we could create salad that tastes nice? Je suis sceptical. This needs to come up to 148 degrees. Then I'm going to whip this out, dip it in the water so that it cools the bottom of the pan. And then hopefully it will give me time to do some dippy dippy, cooly cooly, glassy glassy. <laughs> yummy, yummy. <laughs> olive, olive. Oh no. Ah. Okay, it's coming off. It's coming off because I can see it starting to colour. Oh, bubbly. Okay. Um, <laughs> right, what are we doing? What? Shh. Not panicking. No, we're not panicking, Ebers. Why would we do that? Okay. Okay, now put it on the board, on the table. Damn it. There's a tiny bit of colour, so I've already gnawed this up. Let's do what Audrey did and just start with a lovely strawberry. It's got a bit of a tail, but whatever. This is experimental. Looks great. That looks great. Okay, we're in, we're in, we're in. Do some grapes. Grapes would be good. It dries really quickly, doesn't it? Okay, it's going on. Wow, that's got a big tail. Okay, so this has dried really quickly and it's got very, very unworkable very quickly. I think when you, we put it in the water to cool it off a little bit and then you put it back in the water to cool it off a bit too much. I think just a literally a tiny dab just to take the edge off it. We could go again with sugar. Yeah. The sugar thickened up too quickly. So rule is go quick, go fast. One radish, tick. <laughs> Next, an olive. Oh, look at this. Boys, I'm flying. Oh, it's thickening up already. That's just going straight down. Right, what else should we have? Let's have a bit of celery. Candied celery. There's a great shiny gloss on these, that's for sure. The other thing that's worth noting, Mike, Yes. and I've only realised this through watching you, is that all of that cooled sugar you're dropping back in to oh. the pan. Yes. Which means that's then causing lumps and bumps and crunchy bits in your liquid sugar. So I think once you've got your main in, uh -oh. drip, drip your strands elsewhere. I think I'm out. I think I've pushed my luck. Right, okay. So some lessons have been learned. Hey, do you know what? High water content fruit does not work because the kiwi fell straight off and also it's just left a puddle. What can I get you guys? What would you like to try? Should we try an olive? Cheers. Not looking forward to this, but hey. Olive. Concept works. I will tell you though. It, it takes turns, the edge off an olive, doesn't it? Turns it turns <laughs> the flavour of an olive into something really quite nice. It's very tasty. Okay. Okay. Ebers, have a radish. Jay, have a bit of celery. Cheers. And <laughs> celery. No. Yes. Radish is actually really nice. Celery is not good at all. I don't feel like the celery worked. It just tasted of really sweet 
and then you bite through it and then it tasted really celery, but like slightly stewed. <laughs> oh, because it was cooking it. <laughs> it was, it was, a, it was, there was no crunch from the celery itself. No. You got a crunch from the sugar. Strawberry. And that is amazing. The strawberry in taste and texture was perfect. Everything after, as the sugar started to solidify, was thicker and thicker and thicker, dried less, and I think that also had an effect on the crack and the glass-like hard candy snap. I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna take some photos to prove that I did it. So, that night, I tried again, many, many times. I tried drying the fruit as much as possible. I tried dipping the fruit in the sugar all at the same time to avoid double dipping. It didn't work. The fruit was still too wet and it changed the temperature of the sugar when it went in, which led to crystallization. However, I'd learned so much, but there was no one here to tell. Right, over to you guys. Uh, did you enjoy that experimentation as we went through that? If you did, give the video a like. And head over to our TikTok account. We are Sorted Food Official. Give us some love. Yeah, if we get enough love, we might keep doing it. So you can always make it a little bit wetter than you think because it's going to absorb it in the next minute or two as you serve it. Wap. Wetter. Wet ass pasta. It's pasta. <laughs> what was that? That was the <laughs> reference you got. What was No, Ebbers, you do not want to know. <laughs> I'm telling you now, don't worry about it. It will blow your poor little mind. There's some Ebbers in this house. I've got this to say, search on. <laughs>